You got all oh, perfect. You can just delete those pictures unless you think you'll lose it again. Then you can keep them. All right, works for me. All right, so problem number two from the homework was uh, the length of a rectangle. Is this the right one? Yeah. Is four inches more than its width. The perimeter of the rectangle is 30 inches. What is the length? Ooh. Length. Okay, did I spell that? Am I taping right? Cool. Probably not. You, you know me too well. All right, so let's, uh, let's play around with this problem. Okay, so a reminder that today's Tuesday. So on Thursday, we're going to have a quiz. So we'll have some review tomorrow. Make sure we feel comfortable about the quiz come Thursday. By Friday, you need to have your second semester book. Okay? So you go over to Bear Necessities, pick it up. If money is a problem, let your counselor know. They give you a coupon. You go over back over to the store, and they take care of you. Okay, so this is a... Uh, this is a rectangle problem. So when I think rectangle, let's you know, dig back to prior knowledge. I know that the perimeter equation is 2 length plus 2 width. And if you can't remember that, if you look at a rectangle, you technically have 2 lengths and 2 widths. And that's what that equation is basically saying. So you don't necessarily have to have it memorized. You just realize what a rectangle looks like. All right, so let's go through this, and again, we will have things highlighted. It says the length of the rectangle is 4 inches more than the width. Okay, so the length, L, is 4 inches more than the width. How are we going to make that in respect? L equals what? W plus 4, great. So that's my first equation. And then the only other piece of information they tell us is they say, hey, the perimeter is 30 inches. Okay? So that's where we have to realize our common information. So I know that uh, 30 is equal to 2L plus 2W. So this is a prior knowledge. And if you can't remember it, you know, let me know. If you can't remember like certain equations for perimeters of circles, squares, rectangles, whatever. Let me know. Happy to hand it to you. All right, so friends, these are my two these are my two equations. And in those two equations we have unknowns. We have L as an unknown, and we have W as an unknown. Agree? So talk to me. What should we do? What should we do in order to start solving this? Plug in for L. So I'm going to take that and I'm going to plug it in right there. So I get 30 equals 2 plus 2w. Where those parentheses are is where L used to live. Now it's going to be w plus 4. Distribute over. 2w plus 8 plus 2w. Those are like terms. And start solving it. Subtract 8, subtract 8. Uh, what is that, 22? So I get 4w is equal to 22. Divide each side by 4. So I find that w is equal to 22 over 4. I can reduce that to 11 over 2. Sometimes a length doesn't make sense if it's just a fraction. So sometimes you might want to make it a mixed number. So that is, or make it a decimal. What's, that'd be 5.5, right? Inches? Now, I have a question, friends. If you don't know how to do 11 over 2 as a decimal, how do you do it on a calculator? 11 by two. Yeah, 11 divided by 2. Does that make sense? So, and if you have, have, make sure you're having a calculator. You know, bring a calculator, steal a calculator. I'll, I'll tell you which kids have calculators in the locker and I have their combinations. We'll just go snag them. All right, so, friends. I have the width, but they want us to know what the length is. How do I figure out the length if I know only the width? Plug it 
Yeah, I'm going to take this here. I'm going to plug it in here, or I'm going to plug it in here. Which one looks easier, the top or the bottom? Top. So I get L equals W plus 4. So L equals 5.5 .5 plus 4. So L equals 9.5 inches. Did we answer the question? What is the length? Yeah, 9.5 inches. Is that okay? And again, friends, when we get to that quiz on Thursday, I'll have the problems up here, and I'll definitely go through some highlighting. So just make sure, maybe I'll you know, indicate uh, like a certain variable here or there. But you just want to make sure that you, you know, you're paying attention to it. You know, if I say, hey, we're on number five right now, you're not, you know, doing number three. You're paying attention to number five, so we can walk through it or whatever number the word problems will be on. The quiz will be a front and a back, but we'll definitely review some stuff tomorrow. All right, so that's number two. All right, problem number four. Problem number four. Movie theater tickets cost ten dollars for an adult and six dollars per child. Uh, one group purchased 12 tickets for a total of $84. How many adult and child tickets were sold. Okay. So movie theater tickets cost ten dollars for adult, six dollars for child. One group purchased twelve tickets for a total of eighty-four dollars. How many adult and how many child tickets were sold? Okay. So you kind of understand the concept that there's two different ticket prices and a group purchased some tickets. So uh, let's refer to adults as capital A and as child for as C value. Is that okay? All right, so first off, let's highlight this way. We have adult and child and 12. So how would we make an equation using the new variables that we're plugging in? What do you think? Yes, A plus C equals... 12. So then we have a money value. So adult tickets cost 10 and $6 for child and it was 84. So what do you think the equation should be there? Yeah. Yeah, that's exactly right. So we have a quantity amount, and then we have a money amount. The quantity is how many tickets were sold. Well, we sold 12, which happened to be adult and child. And then we have a money value. The adult, adult tickets cost $10. The child cost $6, and we got $84. All right, so I have two equations and two unknowns. So, friends, what should I do to perhaps try and solve that? Those. I can't add them together as they sit because I get 11a plus 7c equals 96. So what? Go ahead. Would you? I don't know if this is right, but would you times it by times the top equation by negative six? Sure. So you can either pick negative six or negative ten, depending upon what you got. I like that. I heard your negative six first, so let's go with that. So I'm going to distribute negative six here. So I get negative six a minus six c equals 6 times 12, well, 6 times 2 is 12, carry the 1, 6 times 1, carry the 1, 72. And then the bottom equation does not get affected. Oops, sorry, that should have been a 10. Plus 6c equals 84. 
Okay. Add them up. Negative 6 plus 10 is 4, so I get 4a. These cancel, and I get uh, 14? 12, 12. Does that make sense? Divide your side by 4, so what does this tell me? Yeah, there are three adult tickets. Hey, how many tickets were sold in all? Twelve. So how many are child tickets if there was twelve total and three were adult? Nine. So I didn't even have to do that. Now I could have I could have gone back to this saying, I know I have A plus C equals twelve. I know that A is equal to three, and then solved it. So that's going to result in that as well. But sometimes Logic will allow you to finish up a problem. You can kind of skip over a few things. Okay, so there's definitely a thought process that can take place with these. And again, I do understand that sometimes you can sit there and say, can I use a little bit inductive reasoning to go through and start solving? Sure. But if you gave me answers only because you were thinking through it, there was not any work shown, if you missed it, that might not be worth very many points. But if you, whoops, go back. I don't know what this is doing. Stop. I just need you to attach. There we go. All right. Can I move on? All right. Problem number six. One number is five more than another. Oops. If five times the smaller number plus three times the second number equals 47, what are the numbers? Okay. One number is five more than another. If five times the smaller number, oh, that should be plus, sorry, plus three times the second number equals 47, what are the numbers? All right, let's see if we can saw through this a little bit. So, I'm going to call x the smaller y the larger. Can I do that? So one number is five more than another. So one number one number is five more than another. Okay. So let's think about using the x and y. We're calling x the smaller, y the larger. If I add 5 more to a number, the number is going to get bigger in value, agreed? So one number is going to be 5 more than another number. Okay, now, now we I originally put that x is the smaller number, y is the larger number. Does this make sense that y would be the larger number in this case? Right? Y has, has to be bigger than X. If I add 5 to X, I'm going to get a larger number. Okay. Now I have a sneeze that wants to come. <laughs> yeah, baby. Don't worry, it's all in the hall. Yeah, don't worry. If you feel something damp and moist, you know what you're walking through. It's like, oh, it's a high-pressure misting system. No, stirrup sneezed. I, I know, it's gross. You know, stirrup's mind goes in all kinds of different ways. All right, so let's take a look here. Okay, if five times the smaller number plus three times the second number, so the second number's larger, equals 47, what are the numbers? Ooh, okay. Five times the smaller. How do you write five times the smaller? 5x. Very good. Plus 
3 times the second number. What's the second number? 3y equals 47. Well, hello. Well, hi, Mr. Stirrup. Do you guys all know Dr. Geisler? One of my favorite people in the world who makes fun of me that I wear shorts when it's three degrees outside. Yes, I did. <laughs> Can I see a manual? Yeah. You're not in trouble. You're not in trouble. Oh, my God. I love this kid. Everybody does. Yeah. So. What are we learning? Uh, one number is five more than another. If five, And, you know, what I've done is anytime we have a test or quiz, I will have the problem word problem put up, and we highlight to give some basic nice. thoughts of how to... Learn how to apply that to other tests. Get your stuff too. Oh. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Nice. That is a really good strategy, Mr. Stirrup. Do what I can. Yeah. Good teacher. No, I'm still learning. Aren't we all? Yeah. I always tell the kids I learn more from them each and every day than they will learn from me. So I said that's a wonderful gift that they're giving me. That's true. Thank you for letting me have him. Yep. All right. Um, let's see. We do have uh, we do have our two equations now. Agree? Does everyone feel comfortable how we got them? So, friends, what do you think? How should we start solving this? Yeah. Plug the five plus x. Y. Yeah, I'm gonna plug it right in there. Good. So I'm gonna get five x plus three parentheses equals forty seven. Where those parentheses are is where y was. So I'm going to get 5 plus x. Okay. Let's distribute over the parentheses. So I get 5x plus 15 plus 3x equals 47. Okay. Those are like terms. Let's bring it down a little bit. It gives me 8x plus 15 equals 47. Subtract 15. So 8x is equal to, I think, is it 32? Did I do that math right? Yeah. Oh, that works even better because 8 goes into 32. How many times 8 go into 32? Four times. So 4 is which number? X. X is what, uh, what number? It's my smaller number. Okay. How do I get my larger number? Yeah, I'm going to take this. Plug it in here or here. It's going to give me the same answer. Which one looks simpler to plug it into? Top one. Good. Oops. That should be y equals. Sorry. But, uh, you know, one of these days I'm going to get really good penmanship. And then I'll wind up retiring. Don't worry. I'm not retiring anytime soon. It'll be at least three months. I'm just kidding. You know when I'm going to retire, friends? When this stops being fun. And I love what I do. As soon as I'm like, dude, I'm done, I'm retiring. All right, what do you think, friends? Did we do okay? Time we had 11? Cool. All right, so what I'm going to assign you will be due at the end of the period tomorrow. Does that make sense? All right. So I would like you to do page 233 and 234. So what tomorrow is going to look like is I'm going to be like, hey, get homework out. I'll work any questions you want me to work out. And then I'll say, okay, who has it? Hopefully you have it. So I want you to work on one through six. You have the remainder of the period to get a good start on that. Okay. But again, it's due at the end of the period tomorrow. But realize when we get into class tomorrow, I'll say get it out. Let's start going through it. Make sure we're good. I do want you to have some sort of application that you've done on it. A blank sheet of paper means you're not really playing by the real, really good school rules.